Welcome to Grants Rock Warehouse, and tonight we have yet another one and done episode. Tonight we are looking at the one and only release from Wilson Hawk. This would be a collaboration between Richie Coxon and Richie Zito. Soulful, melodic, great songwriting. What more can you ask for? The panel's here, and we are ready to go, so let's get started. Talking bands that no one talks about. Grant's Rock Warehouse. Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse, and welcome to yet another edition in our one and done series. Tonight's victim, Wilson Hawks. This came out in 2009. In fact, tomorrow is its 15th anniversary. And what's funny is that Byron Bolt, well, it's not funny, but Byron brought this topic up to the group and we went, all right, let's take a look at it. I personally had not heard of this record. I don't think any, had you heard it, John? I hadn't heard it, no. Not until Byron talked about it. Daryl had, I, I had John, heard it because I'm, I'm, it it cot, I'm a cots and nut, so I did hear about this. Back all right, well, I'm going to throw it over to BM Bolt to do the introduction since this was his topic. But tonight, I do want to extend a welcome. John the Music Nut, John Clouser, uh, uh, DC Tune Time, and BM Boulder here tonight. No Ernesto, he had another obligation, but uh, we've got everybody else here. And I would like to welcome all you gentlemen. Nice to see you tonight. Are you guys ready to talk some Wilson I'm ready. Hawk? I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to find out if anybody's been able to unearth much information about this at all because i scoured far and i wide did too and it was just nothing crumbs, <laughs> there's crumbs. nothing yeah in fact i just want to mention real quick for anybody gonna go well i'm gonna get out there and look for it this never had a, a, a physical media release you could go on uh youtube and find it you can go out what's it on Bandcamp? is that oh. where it originally was released i think so there, yeah. like, see, there's the graphic. John has the graphic right there. So that's what the record cover looks like. But this is a pretty obscure record. So I'm going to throw it over to BM Bolt. Byron, fill us in. Yeah. Well, it's like you said, there's nothing out there. And I've looked and I've looked. And I mean, I found a little bit. Um, technically, it's a project with Richie Cotton and uh, Richie. And, um, you know, he. He's done some producing, but I don't know that much about him. I think he no. all, he played with Fleetwood Mac for the Time album, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, Richie Zito. I don't know what you else about you need to know guy. is he did Busted by Cheap Trick <laughs> and Lap Lap of Luxury. That's pretty much gonna. That's all you need to know. They're not bad. They're, they could. They're, they're not great, but they're not bad. <laughs> but anyway. that's that's just my own personal opinion. <laughs> Talking <laughs> about it. Richie as a musician, but we're going to watch Richie, Cotton or Zito? Zito. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so, do you know anything yeah. much about this project? Do you know anything about how it came together? How did um, you get? First of all, you brought this topic to the group. Yeah. How did you get turned on to this? I was. I've been a pretty big Richie fan since this came out. His first solo album in what eighty nine, I think, yeah, eighty nine on Shrapnel. This was a basically a guitar shredder album. So he started out as that. Um, I'll give you a little history, I guess. On and then uh, his next album on Shrapnel, he started singing. It was more of a hard rock metal album, though, still pretty good. And then he'd kind of go back and forth. He he'd do some shredder stuff. He'd do some singing stuff. He did these two albums with Greg Howe. They're more of a. See, I've never uh, heard those. They're more of a fusion. <laughs> You know, a lot of shredding, kind of, kind of fusiony. Um, but you know, he uh, he he did an album called Motherhead's Family Reunion in the early '90s as well, which mm -hmm. was pretty heavy. But at the same time, you could you could start to hear some of these uh, soul, soul. R&B influences because he did like, a cover of uh, "Reach, Reach Out. Out, I'll Be There," which just smokes. <laughs> It's it's like Motown, hard rock Motown, yeah. with the soul crazy. undertones. I mean, it's, it's it's fantastic. I'm fantastic. having a mental block, but did Richie was he ever a Night Ranger? Who was a Night Ranger that no. took over for Jeff Watson? I'm having a a blank. I don't know about that, but he he was in Poison for the one album. Uh, was it uh, Mayor Tom. Tom. When what's his Mayor name Tom. wasn't in the band anymore? D, uh, yeah, when uh, help me. What's his What's his face? CC Deville. CC Deville. Yeah. So he did the one album with them, 
that didn't work out. There were some issues with him dating the drummer's old girlfriend or something. And then uh, that'll get you into trouble. Yeah. But, but, not the, not the, throughout the nineties, <laughs> throughout the nineties, he was releasing a lot of albums. I think he's got 20 solo albums roughly. Yeah. And, um, he was dabbling in this soul R and B stuff, but it was still pretty heavy at times. Um, he did a blues album and then he did this virtue or virtue with uh stanley clark lenny white and uh karen briggs and rachel z it's a total uh nice. 70s fusion style album holy crap um, so he's been so he's been all over the place as he's far also, as styles and, and he was he also mr all big way. yeah okay yeah yeah he did two albums with mr big in the early 2000s um uh, you know, he did an album called Slow and another album called Change in the early 2000s. And you could hear there was a there was a track or two on those albums, which were which would fit perfectly on this uh, um, Wilson Hawk album. So mm -hmm. he, he's been doing a lot of things where he was kind of dipping his toe into this style. But on this album of Wilson Hawk, he totally goes into this 70s soul R&B style. Um, you know, he grew up outside of Philly. Uh, so I think he got a lot of that. Uh, Philadelphia had a lot of that That's, kind of soul R&B well, going at, on. Todd. Look at Todd Brunkley. <laughs> look right. at Daryl Hall. Oh, look at John right. Oates. It's all yeah. so, the same influence. Yeah. I think that was a huge influence on him growing up. So this album, he said, I'm going all in for this style. Uh, you know, apparently Richie Zito helped him out with it. I don't know how much Richie Zito did on it. I think for the most part, Rich, Richie Carson plays probably most of the instruments on here. Uh, maybe he doesn't play the horns. There's a lot of horns, and there's, there's a lot female, of horns on it. Female backing vocals too. So, but I think in general he probably plays most of the instruments on here. But I believe he does play some drums too. Yeah, he's a, he's quite a talent. That guy's a triple threat when you consider songwriting ability, guitarist, vocalist, uh, and he's so prolific. Yeah. I mean, it's just an incredible talent. And like you, Byron, I've been a fan of his since the very beginning. I mean, the first album I heard of his was, I think, Electric Joy, which was the yeah. second one. It was not quite as a shredder an album. It's a lot, it's a lot like this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm, I've been a hardcore fan ever since. And, of course, now he's with the Winery Dogs, which is one yes. of my favorite <laughs> current bands too. out there. Fantastic talent. Yeah, so, I was getting him confused with Joel Holkstra. Okay. Sorry, I'm bad. All right. Joel so, Holkstra's great, too. Yes. Say that. But yeah, so to wind up with my intro here, um, what else? Like, you know, like I said, he, he's done some shredding, some jazz, the bands we mentioned. Um, and we've talked about how, uh, you know, the Reach Out, I'll Be There, and all this stuff that he's done that kind of led up to this. But um, I think I'm just going to kind of cut it off now because I'm just repeating myself. And <laughs> you guys can talk about it. Well, and maybe I mean, at the end, I'll throw in some more points about the songs that I like and, you know, add some points that somebody might have missed. Or something. Yeah, that's cool. But um, I'm, what I'm kind of curious about is why did he even bother to call this album a name Wilson Hawk as if it's some group or uh, uh, kind of like a uh, Hugh Thrall type thing or whatever? What? Is this a marketing ploy? Because he had re recorded a ton of albums before that. Did he feel like, in marketing wise, he didn't want to attach his name to this because of the direction, or just what was going on with this? You know, maybe it was a Derek and the Dominoes kind of thing where he he wanted some anonymity, like you said. Maybe he wanted to kind of break away from the old, oh, this is Richie Cotson. You know, who is Wilson Hawk? And uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. Nobody knows this record, kind of, yeah, really. Yeah, it's kind of an odd choice, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, if you look, I even on the Wikipedia page I'm looking at, it doesn't say anything about it. It, it mentions that he released it on, on his, his Well, page. maybe that's all, but that's not and anything. I think it's listed in the discography, but there's no page for that record. So it's so there's nothing when about when this I record. Listen to it, when I'm listening to it, it's Richie singing, right? Yeah. Holy God. Rap is he have a great voice? Wow, well, people can compare him to Chris Cornell. Yeah, I hear some of that in there. Uh, you know, like they're both kind of gritty at times, 
but uh, uh, I definitely I don't, hear, I don't think they're that similar, but a lot of people say, oh, he sounds like Chris Cornell. But, I hear well, Chris just, Cornell, and I think he's his approach a lot as far as here, his career trajectory reminds me of Glenn Hughes because Glenn Hughes is a man about – he could do the hard rock. He can do the funk. He can do the soulful stuff. And Richie Coxon, I think, is locked in in that kind of mode of uh, talent as far as uh, being an instrumentalist, vocalist, guitarist. I mean, well, he and oh, Glenn man, worked what together great... in the mid '90s on uh, one of Richie's albums and one of Glenn's mm -hmm. albums. So they they've actually worked together too. That's a natural for sure. All right, cool. Well, that's a great intro. We really don't know much about it, but we're going to look at it anyway. Thanks, Byron. I appreciate it. That's you enlightened me more than I had been. John, the music now. What's your thoughts on this record? Are you familiar with Richie's work or anything? I. Oh yes, know? I I love the Winery Dogs. Um, they're one of my favorite bands that's out there right now, and I knew I've I've had the Native Tongue album by Poison since it came out, and I knew his stuff with Mister Big as well. I've never listened to his solo stuff though. Never saw no, I live either. solo. Um, yeah, and I know he's very prolific on his for his 50th birthday, he put out a 50 track album. I do remember that. So, but, um, yeah, you, you if you compare him to Chris Cornell, he's more soulful than Chris Cornell, but Chris Cornell had that more of pain in his voice. He was more of a he could scream like nobody, and way more power, way more. yes, mm -hmm. correct, right. So, with this album, it's it's like like a trip back in time and mm -hmm. it's very heavy r&b if if you like the rockin what like the rockin version of richie Cotson, this might throw you off a little bit unless you're into the deeper cuts on the winery dogs albums like regret or think it over uh there's a lot of that in there but if you go track by track how does it be feels a great opener it's straight up Early's R and B with that Wawa that Wawa guitar line in there, the great horn lines, his vocals are awesome, excellent opener. And one thing I could say about the production, although it's it this song has a seventies and eighties feel, the, the the production is very well done. It it sounds modern, but I mean it's not recorded too loud like a lot of new albums are. I think it was recorded very well. I need your love. That would be, if you were going to release this as an album and put it out in the stores, that's the single right there. Because mm -hmm. you got the upbeat love song there. It, it's very Sam and Dave. That's the first thing I thought with those. Uh, I was going to say Stash. Yeah. Same. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. <laughs> yeah. That is very much of that late 60s soul R&B groove encapsulated at, in, on that song more than any of the others. I I agree with you. Right. Really Thanks. much. Yeah. And then you have next song is over. It's an upbeat song about a breakup and it works very well. You listen to the lyrics. It's, it's, um, he wants to break a relationship, but he's singing it joyously. Like, Oh, you've been so good to me, but it's over. You know, we had some great times, but, but it's a cool tune that works really well. Nice little lyrical guitar solo in there. Richie doesn't play a lot of guitar in this album, but when he <laughs> plays, it's so tasty. Mm -hmm. it's just it's so great um something in you this starts out it, it, it kind of sounds a little new wave at the beginning mm -hmm. it, it sounds a little like squeeze like argy bargy squeeze <laughs> at the beginning yeah. it, it, with, with those with those um keyboard <clears> lines <throat> that's what it sounds like and then it goes into the chorus and then it sounds r&b again another strong track and then from here we get a whole bunch of slow songs um, the first one is How Do You Know? This reminds you of Regret, which is the last song on the Winery Dog self-titled debut. Not quite as dramatic, not as long, but very well done. The Hammond B3 is a nice touch in there. It has, again, it takes you back to the 70s. Yes. It sounds, reminds me of the Eagles. I thought of that on some other songs on here. But I'm not but saying I, that's good or bad. I'm just saying. No, no, no. It's a good thing to me. Yeah. I mean, this is total 70s. This record is total 70s. And well, like you said, he nailed it. But John, he nailed it. Yes. No question. Yeah. I promise I will. Another slower ballad. 
this is more of a piano ballad. It's got the gospel overtones in there with the backing vocals. It plays like a wedding song. That's how I lyrically and musically. That's how it plays out. Oh, oh don't say that with Bro <laughs> Byron. Uh, wedding reception song. <laughs> well, that'll oh, trigger him. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't get him worked up. <laughs> This is a good wedding song, not one that'll make right. me want to punch right. a wall. Yeah, right. it is a great tune. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything good. calm. Another slow track. This is decent. The chorus is okay. Um, I think of all the slower tracks, this would be my least favorite. But when you get into Beautiful Life, that is fantastic. That has a fantastic chorus. It's more more of an R&B feel. This time it feels more like 50s R&B to me. In a way it's done. Is there's, there's, there's these slight differences. With it's them. like mm -hmm. that Muscle Shoals kind of thing. Like that early 70s mu Muscle Shoals type of feel. Like we're mm -hmm. down in Alabama. I I, nope. that is, I was that is, green. I can tell you about that. Yeah. That is a great point. But don't you think with, it totally yeah. is that? Oh, yeah. With with all these songs, especially on the ballad end of things, there are slight shifts. You're going to get one that's a little Motown and one that's a little Muscle Shoals. Yeah, that's a great right. point. Yeah. The 50s kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And then, What I Lost, another one of my favorite songs on the album. And then we got another one, and this one has more of an early eight. 70s R&B feel. This is very good. Like, Beautiful Life and What I Lost are a great two for right here. Um, but you got five slow songs in a row. And I think that breaks up the momentum of the album. Grant, you love to talk about sequencing the ballads. Yes. I, do. I think if you you start out with like four upbeat songs, mm -hmm. and then you got five slow ones. I think if you started with the first two tracks and then threw in I promise I will third instead of sixth and then mixed it up a little bit more. I mm -hmm. think this would play more smooth. Like here, yeah. it's just like one slow song after another. And while they're all good and two of them, I think are great. I think it kind of sounds a little samey after a while, even though mm -hmm. there's these little nuances in the songs that we, we could pick up on. Right. That's just, my opinion there or no, you could start right. on you could start on track five and have it be a mood setter yes there you go <laughs> here's that's the great DC's thing angle. There, there's DC's no angle. there's no physical media version yeah. of this so just play them whatever yeah. you want yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's what i was thinking <laughs> like, i thought to myself good yeah. point good point <laughs> right like if i bought like i say if this was a if i could purchase this the first thing i would do is put it on my laptop and then put it on a cdr in the way i want it mm-hmm but like you said, this wasn't released as a proper album. So they that wouldn't come into play. But, you know, that's just how I listen to albums. I think about Ebb and Flow. And to me, it's like, like there's certain albums that I really like, but I would like more if there weren't so many songs that were the same vibe in a row. Like like the, the variety would be sp spiced up more throughout the album. But Stay, I actually wrote finally something where we pick up the tempo yep. and this is very good another nice solo in here from richie and then we end with a piano ballad called the road which is excellent again this does remind you a little bit of this those kind of songs that richie does with the winery dogs uh very emotional great closer very good album i would buy this I, in a heartbeat if it was available too. absolutely and like the fact that I'm saying, oh yeah, the sequencing, still very good. I, I would give this an eight and a half. Eight and a half. We will document that. All right, cool. So far, it's looking good. All right, let's throw. Thank you, John. Let's throw thank John you. Clauser. What's your thoughts on this? Well, you know, this is one of those albums that I was like, when I first started hearing this, I was like, I gotta, I gotta get my wife in on this one. I want to see what she thinks of this because <laughs> my my wife is not like most. She, like she won't listen to my wasp stuff back there. Well, right. probably not, John. No. I can't blame her. Can't no, blame her. but I mean, so she's she doesn't go for that kind of stuff. So I I, we, I was listening. I we put this on in the car, and she's like, I I'm digging this album. You know, so it's just like you know, this is something that I could listen to. 
and with you especially and not feel like i'm like oh boy you know this is she likes the feel of this album mm -hmm. so that was that was a good start so yeah no richie Cotson, yeah <laughs> There you go. So <laughs> Richie Cotton, I mean, I, I had his first album because I was into all those sh shrapnel artists back in the mm -hmm. day. And I remember mm -hmm. listening to it, but I it, it didn't stick out to me like a Jason Becker or a or Paul Gilbert and Racer X and those kind of it did that one, it didn't stick out to me like that. So it just kind of fell by the wayside. So um, you know, of course he got into poison, got into Mr. Big. Well, yeah, I didn't follow his solo career all that much, but um I, I got to see the winery dogs last year in concert and that was a so much of a fun that was probably one of the most fun feeling shows i think i'd ever been to in a long time because the music just has this there's just something about their sound that just is really kind of a, just fun it's and bombastic virtuosity pretty much yeah, pretty much I just love and, it well you're put, a, dc that's right bombastic <laughs> virtuous virtuosity um so yeah, when I listen to this, I mean this is like Philly, the Philadelphia soul sound is what was coming to my mind. Yep. You know, so you you, you of course, yes, Hall and Oates a little yes. bit. You got, you know, you certainly have the influence of the of the like the OJs and and bands yep. like that. Um, you know, I think I I think I did find something where Richie said something about he's been wanting to make an album like this for a long time. Um I did actually find a I, I don't know how accurate this is. Mm -hmm. So Richie Cotson's on vocals, guitar, keyboards, bass, drums, Richie Zito, guitar, keyboards, bass, drums, producer, okay. Arlen, Arlen Shirebaum on organ, Hammond organ and piano. Oh, he's very good. Franklin Vanderbilt on drums, <laughs> John Pierce on bass, Tal Bergman on drums, Stanley Behrens on harmonica, Julia Maxine and Oren uh, Waters with the female backing vocals. Didn't say anything about the horn section, so I can't help you on that. But um, horns are great on this record. I will yes. say, yeah. hats yes. off, John Clauser. I mean, yeah, I couldn't I, find. Look at you. Anything. You are. You should deserve <laughs> some kind of medal. I don't know. <laughs> don't know how accurate all that was, but that's something I plugged in. I'm like, that's what popped up. So I'm like, okay, interesting. Um, how does it feel? Gosh, I love that groovy soul fuel. You know, first opening track. Just, yeah. I was listening to it on the headphones earlier, and I'm just like all i could see is myself doing like um you remember that video by the band cake where they were giving the tape and the head and the walkman to everybody and everybody was just kind of listening to the song and see what they thought of it and there was just one woman that she was just like she was just like you know really just <laughs> swaying to them well that's what i was feeling like when i was when i had the headphones on for this one but I, every song i just felt like i was just like man i'm just just digging the groove of all of this um, I just thought, uh, you know, Cotson's very tasteful, uh, playing here does kind of have that. If Chris Cornell was a soul singer, that was, that was kind of getting, uh, what I was getting. Um, another, well, I'll go into that. I'll get that. I'll go there a little bit better. Uh, I need your love. I think another, just a groovy, I don't know, again, kind of a squeeze feel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, one, one person and, and my wife concurred with this. Uh, one person that I thought of when I when I was listening to this, um, we had a band here in Alabama. Played, they were pretty much legendary in the '70s and uh, into the early '80s, mostly in the club scenes and stuff like that. Uh, they did get signed to MCA and they put out a couple records. And uh, this is the band's second album. It's called Hotel. I've got that on CD. Yes, Half Moon Silver, Mark Phillips. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, Mark Phillips here here on the on the very end yeah um good record very good record and I it, mean, it the, came out that rock candy put that out john yes they, they did issued it. yes they did and uh but don't don't sleep on the first one because the first one's also really good too but i like half moon so i've got half that one too. too but anyway i got to i do I, dc's just going i do it's great it's a, they're you both too. very good albums um anyway but i could hear I, you know, I got to, got to see Mark Phillips a little bit throughout the years since in my living here. And he has a very soulful voice to his, to his now his, he's got more of a rasp to it. So I don't think you're going to hear him do the falsetto like, like Cotson does. Watson's, wow. But boy, I could, I could so hear Mark, God rest his soul. Cause he passed away about three years ago. Um, I could so hear Mark putting a band together and doing an album like this. And it would sound Perfect. It would sound exactly like this. You know, if you guys don't know Hotel, 
you got to check it out. Highly, highly recommend that. Mark that down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Rock Candy, I don't know if they put out, how many albums have they put out total, John? Do you know? Uh, they only just did the two albums. Okay. So both now. of those are available on Rock Candy. I mean, I'm just saying. So they're now. out there digitally. And I don't think they've ever been released <clears throat> in other any other format other than vinyl or maybe you know reissue yeah, maybe, maybe maybe cassette maybe i don't know but but now i will say mark phillips did another <laughs> thing but uh that's called uh split the dark that was with uh uh tommy calton that was also in hotel but that's a this you can pretty much only find on vinyl but anyway yeah i've never seen that sorry about the tangent um no we like tangent uh let's see um uh over uh another just song just again i just love that sound on the on the headphones just a smooth guitar solo. I just love the smooth, the smooth stuff here. Uh, something in you, very Hall and Oates. Again, that kind of that blue eyed soul feel. Loving all that stuff. Exactly, um, exactly what I have on my notes, John. Very <laughs> Hall and Oates. I, I, I must have, I must have chimed into you, Daryl. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, uh, how do you know? Um, again, to me, that just that Philly soul sound and and and, and all of that Hammond organ. Oh, oh, it's oh, yeah. oh, oh, it just made me want to cry. Yeah. Um, I promise I will. My notes here says two slow ballads in a row, but it doesn't, but it, I don't mind that. It just sounds so good because it just has that different feel. There was almost like a George Harrison like little solo hmm. to me. It just kind of, it, it kind of had a George Harrison kind of feel, but then it goes into that, oh, that beautiful sax solo. Oh, my. <laughs> but again, Cotson's falsetto uh man just so so smooth um everything good again just Cotson's voice just another slow song but again another great you, you don't mind it uh beautiful life again uh bluesy soul oh my is what i wrote here <laughs> enough said uh just a, again a beautiful chorus i love the song uh what i lost um kind of a folky start very sorrowful heartfelt soul another just I, another, another powerful track Love the stay with where, where it gets back into that kind of <laughs> upbeat stuff. Um, again, kind of a squeeze like sound. I, I just when I hear that organ in the in the bass, it just kind of reminded me of uh, um, oh, what's that one song? Uh, Tainted by that's the Fruit it. of Another, Attempted by the Fruit that's of Another, squeeze, yes, Tempted, yeah, yeah that, that's that's kind of what I was kept hearing. I'm like, oh, these are variations of Tempted, but uh, anyway. Uh, the road, the longest song on the album, five minutes twenty six seconds. Just a slow, emotion filled um, soul track. God, again, like like John was saying, just something you could hear on on the Winery Dogs. And I was like, mm. love this album, love, love, love this album. I I give this easy a uh, heck. I'd give this a nine easily. All right, super. We'll go with a nine. My goodness, things are looking good. <laughs> Thank you, Mister Clouser. All right. DC, we're going yes, to talk over to you. What's your thoughts? Well, I think between Byron and the Johns, they've really <laughs> done a nice job covering song by song um, this album. So I'm just going to throw out some general impressions mm -hmm. in that I've been a Kotzen fan for decades. Love the guy's talent. He's one of my top five current rockers alive or musicians alive. Who's Anything he attaches his name to, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to love it um, just in my wheelhouse big time. Uh, what you get with this album, like everybody says, this is a throwback R&B soul album. You're not going to get a lot of guitar. What guitar you get is fantastic, but it's a lot of keyboards, ham and organ, horns, some female background vocals. It's a very nice mix. Uh, very different even from the other funk soul stuff that Kotzen has done. This is really going back to a time and kind of stripping away the funk and just getting the R&B vibe coming mm -hmm. through. Slight yeah. variations between songs with different styles of soul of an earlier era. And it was really a funny thing because I have an iPod that's got thousands of songs on it. And for this album, I, I only picked the best songs to put on the iPod. I may like other songs on the album, but I put the best ones on there. I listened to this album with a fresh ear, and my top three songs were the three songs that I do have on my iPod. So at least I'm consistent in a lot of these things, and my impressions tend to bear out over time what I really, really, really love. The song Something in You, like uh, John Clauser said, 
I have written down here, soulful pop a la Hall and Oates. Love it. Mm -hmm. um, I Promise is my favorite ballad out of all of these. Um, and the song Stay, I, I put, this song slightly reminds me of I Love the Nightlife by Alicia, Alicia Bridges. And I mentioned <laughs> it's got a very nice guitar solo. When wow. he does decide to play guitar here, very well thought out and complements the tunes perfectly. But what else would you expect with this guy? Like I said, he is right at the top of the top of artists who are still out there today doing their thing. And his talent and my taste just mesh. So if I was going to rate this, and I'm, I'm going to be a little bit, probably a little bit less than the previous grades. And that's not because I don't think this is outstanding, because I would give this a seven and a half or an eight. But there are other cuts and albums where he does take a soul funk vibe that I rate higher. And that's the only reason why this one would be um, bracketed there, because like Motherhead's Family Reunion was mentioned, that's really strong guitar based funk and soul. And that is completely, totally in my sweet spot. So that would be like in your upper echelons of the cuts and catalog. But this is a very, very good album. And it really encapsulates a time period in uh, soul and R&B. And this guy really brings it, really brings it. So, Wow, you make me really interested in hearing those other records. Because I, this, I, I thought was just, top notch all over i can't imagine how yeah. he could improve upon it oh yeah well check out motherhead's family reunion and it'll knock your socks off i will also say because the album he made when he was 50 which mm -hmm. is 50 songs as he turned 50 i uh, i was very disappointed in that one for whatever reason i just those there's 50 songs so it's a lot to digest but if you love somebody stuff's gonna hit you right from the get-go and for me, that album kind of fell flat. So for whatever my opinion's worth, I uh, wouldn't probably go to that one. But check out Motherhead's Family Reunion. Solid. All right. Will do. So you're going to go 7.5 or you going 8? I'm going to go because he's got other albums that I love, love, love much yeah. more. So I'm going 7.5 with this, but it's still right. an outstanding album. It just sounds like with Richie and his body of work, you really can't go wrong for the most part. Mm -hmm. He almost sounds like a retirement project, would you say, John? Got a lot of records, man. There's a lot. I just so looked at his discography. Are you talking about Richie yeah, Coxon? He's yeah. prolific. Oh, yeah. Yes. He is prolific. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't even, this is the good a place to start as any. So I guess I've started here. Yeah, if I when I turned fifty, if I said to myself, "I'm going to do fifty drawings to celebrate my fiftieth birthday," I'd say, "That's that." I don't got that kind of mojo and energy. <laughs> but man, he's he's extremely prolific, extremely gifted vocalist and guitarist. I just that guy's a stunning talent, in my opinion. Um, did, has anyone here ever heard the Smith Copson album? They did with Adrian Smith. Of yeah, yeah. I forgot mm -hmm. about that too. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean that re that's fairly recent, right? Yeah, a couple years ago, three, three years four ago, yeah. years. Now. Yeah. yeah, well, that's fairly recent. Oh yeah, yeah it's like brand new, according to me. I haven't heard it. <laughs> it's good. It's more rock based. Definitely more of rock base, of course, with the collaborator. Collaborator, but uh, I think I prefer the uh, Cotson stuff on there to the Smith stuff. Though. I do. Yeah, uh, I knew that was going to happen just because I'm it, so it, it in to his <laughs> talent. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, Daryl. Excellent. Well, I know Byron is the one who mentioned this topic and yeah. threw it out. What's uh, your I'll, thoughts? I know it's probably going to be a ten out of ten with Byron. Well, so, no, I mean, what would I, you rate it, Byron? Well, um. You want me a number right away? You want me to talk about it a little more? You can talk about it. <laughs> talk about it a little more. Um, we got time. We have time. I luckily got to finally see him about a year and a half ago. You guys might remember I mentioned that. I was recording the show, and I had to get the hell out and go see the show. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. It was just a solo show, him and like a bass and a drummer. They didn't play anything off of this, though. Um, but that was fine. Um, so I'm just going to point out the three or the four songs that I really like the most. And oddly enough, some of you guys didn't like these as well as I did, but some of you did. Um, I really like something, man. That that could have been a single. It's just That's exactly so, yes. It it's so catchy and you know, like you guys have talked about Hall and Oates. Although I don't know a lot about Hall and Oates. 
I've only got a couple things. So, um, but yeah, I, I can see them doing something like that. It's very accessible. Um, I kind of like everything good as well. And I just noticed it today. He actually made a video for that. Hmm. So I guess you could say maybe that was a single. I don't think it really was, but he did make a video. For Something and, in um, you is definitely the single, I think. Yeah, but every, everything yeah. good's got a video. I mean, it shows him actually singing the words. And so it's not like just something somebody threw together. Um, okay, Beautiful Life. That's a song that always sticks out with me. My wife loves that song. Um, believe it or not, we played this song during our wedding reception. And it's not a wall puncher. There you go. Nice. <laughs> um, you know, his, his vocals on that are just incredible. Um, he's got yeah. a nice guitar solo on there. Um, it's probably the best guitar solo on here, but I mean, that's not saying a whole lot. I mean, there's not a lot of guitar on here. <laughs> um, and then the other song I want to talk about is Stay. I love that song. Yeah. Um, you you know, I wrote down. In there. I wrote this down. It reminds me of something, but I couldn't put my finger on it. You guys, are both a couple of you guys um, mentioned that it reminded you of something, but I can't really put my finger on it. I, I put, just, I love the nightlife by Alicia Bridges. I'll have to check the it out. The question out. is, I love the nightlife. Yeah. Um, it's such a <laughs> great song. Okay. I love the chorus. It's, I love that. the nightlife. It really oh, is. Oh, man. So, yeah, those are my, I think, top four songs on here, but there's not a bad track on here. Really. There's not. Um, I'm going to kind of temper my, uh, score on this a little bit because like, uh, Daryl was saying, he's got better stuff. Um, and there's I a couple can't songs imagine on what here. would be better, but oh, I'm interested now. There's wait. a couple songs on here that <laughs> are just okay, but most everything is just really good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go eight and a half. All right. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have an 8.5, a 9, a 7.5, and an 8.5. When I heard this, I really didn't know what to expect. But knowing Byron, you know, he always has good things. So I, I heard it. And, you know, what? how does it feel starts off? I went, what? Holy, What? <laughs> Is this? When when I hear that, you know what I hear? I hear Sly and the Family Stone. Mm -hmm. I hear the Jackson Five. I hear a little bit of Hall and Oates. I hear a lot of different influences. But the thing is with this record is that Richie, the Richies, pull it off with perfection. Production's great. Yeah, I can't really I can't really count sequencing since it's never really been sequenced. So I'll throw that out. Sequence it however you like. But this, if you close your eyes, you swear to God, this is 1972, 1973. Guitars yeah. sound great. The horns. It's right out of uh um Earth Wind and Fire. It's like Earth Wind and Fire horns, kind of like that. It's uh like um, Chicago, it's right up there. There are so many different influences on here. But Richie's and the Richie's are able to take it and mold it into something that is absolutely stunning. I like every track on here. You gentlemen have went through all the tracks. I don't need to go through that. But <clears throat> it's a pl I, I I wish this was out on physical media. Vinyl. Yeah. CD, whatever, but I'm fine with the download. I can play it on my phone. I can play it on my computer. That's fine. But I'd like to really hear it. You know what I mean? Let's mm -hmm. pump it through something because the energy on this record is really impressive. The background singers, God, for God's sake, I'm Richie. Uh, uh, the Richies, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and I don't like what Richie Zito did with Cheap Trick at all. <laughs> but here... You get him away from the 90s, the 80s, I think he did a fine job. If he's the one that produced it, um, I think it's a shame that this never really got a real release anywhere. And I do think it's a shame that people are unaware of this record. Hopefully, through the warehouse, people will stumble across this, look for Richie Kotzen, and hopefully 
they can get turned onto this record. And that's the only thing I care about. It's our mission. It's our mission. Please, <laughs> before I give my rating, go out and check this out. Thank you. There's John. the cover again. There you go. There Anybody who needs to know. Please go out, check this out, and leave a comment because we do want to hear it. We go over the comments. Everybody in here jumps in the comments. Let us know what you think. Me, I was just totally taken off guard, and I thought the whole thing was just a wonderful, wonderful record. Should I give it a 10? Well, now, since I know that there are better records than this out by Richie Kotzen, I, I now I, I, I'm just going to go with <laughs> what everybody else has said. Well, now, no, this is exactly why we do these shows. Yeah. And turn then each other on to stuff. Turn the viewers on to stuff. Go out and check out the rest of the catalog, for God's sakes. I guess I give it, oh God, I'm going to give it a nine. I think it was absolutely brilliant. Richie Carson, it, it, absolutely a brilliant musician. Yeah, it's a shame that he's not a household word word along with what i said for decades why isn't todd rundgren a household name he should based on the magnitude of his talent and his variety of same thing here same approaches thing here. yeah and and Kotzen is oh what a stellar Kotzen's talent unbelievable yeah but isn't it a wonderful thing about being a music lover and finding like-minded folks and they turn you on to something that kind of just passed you by because you can't right. take in everything. And when you have those moments where someone recognizes um, what you like, it says, Hey, why don't you listen to this? I think you'll like it. And it hits, man, that is just music Nirvana right there. Yeah. Just, this was a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Darryl, Byron, you you know had this before or you, you Who? Is this new to you daryl or you've had it for a while no i've had it since it came out okay I mean, right. my radar was always out there for Kotzen, and i love it I picked up that he did i got it yeah i'm gonna check out more richie stuff if i'll put it's... together i'll put together a list of a couple of his solo albums other than motherhead that i think you should check out as Please. far as the hierarchy is daryl do you like, like the best Dar Daryl, how do you feel about slow and change? I really like no, those. They're, they're I, accessible, in my opinion. Let me... Let, it kind of... Byron, it blurs after a while. I would have yeah. to look at my master <laughs> list of cuts and yeah, uh, cuts I have on my uh, iPod and then get back to you about where that's parsed out in the hierarchy. I know he's he's done a couple of them that just haven't really resonated with me. They're still outstanding. The talent is still fantastic top shelf it's just mm -hmm. the songs aren't connecting with me quite as much you're not going to pick up an album of his and just say what a piker this guy's got nothing going on i mean uh, the talent is too great for that not to take place yeah the one thing i forgot to mention was his vocals i was immediately just struck with the quality of his vocalizations on this record I, I do think i hear that sound card that the sound garden thing i do hear that uh but soulful my god this is soulful if you like soul check this record out they don't yeah. make them like this anymore ladies and gentlemen we're talking 2009 there was no one doing this then when he did his first vocal album, he really didn't sound like this as much. Yeah, I feel like his vocals, his voice has improved over the years. And he found his voice. He found his voice, yeah. Yeah, because his, his first album that he did all vocals on, it just doesn't sound nearly as good as this. Well, that first album that he did, what would, what's, it's not like, it's not soul, is it? What is it? No, what the first vocal album, what was it, Daryl? Do you remember the name of the first vocal album? Uh, uh, it's not the second album for sure. Um, well, I would think his more, song, I would more think of a got, metal album. It's a metal hard, album, yeah. hard rock and slash metal -y. I would think as he as he got older, his songwriting and playing just got right. leaps and bounds better. Um, and, and yeah, you, you know, he might have been everything. He might have been kind of pigeonholed into that. He was such a good guitar player. It's like, okay, you're on shrapnel. Let's do a Let's do a shredder record. And maybe deep down he's like, yeah, but this isn't really my thing. But 
But that's what's going to get him attention at that period right. of time because yeah. great soulful singers weren't really where it was at at that point in time. Right. It was a few kind of, shredder. Well, heck, if you I'll think in 2009, I'm surprised White never got a. I don't know. Maybe they submitted this for release and it didn't. It got rejected. I don't know. Who knows? There's no information out there. Yeah. Just eyeballing my uh, iPod that I've got on my computer. It's hooked up. The three albums I seem to have the most tracks on my Ultimate Tunes iPod are Salting Earth, Go Faster, and Break It All Down. Um, so just eyeballing my list from across the room. I would say that it'd be a good bet to check out those. He right. focuses on a lot, those couple of those albums on his uh, latest set list as well. Seems like he was, mm. he was focusing on that uh, 2000s to like late 2000s to early 2015-ish period when I saw him a couple of years ago. Right. He didn't really do any older stuff, so. Cool. I hope we've turned you on to something, ladies and gentlemen. We just reviewed Wilson Hawk, the only release that they did, and it never came out on physical media. It came out on Bandcamp. You can download it probably. Go out and check it out. But our average, we've got an 8.5, a 9, a 7.5, an 8.5, and a 9. We come up with a, uh, holy crap, an 8.5. I think you'd be very happy with I that I think rating. that's a good rate. Yeah. I think that's a decent rating. It's well worth checking out. And when you consider it's an album that nobody knows about, this gem just sitting there with the tracks on Bandcamp, people just passing by. We're trying to help folks. We're trying to give you a little bit of direction and uh, some things there that you might really like. Yeah. So there you go. Check it out. It's a great record. i blown away, totally blown away by it. So I want to thank Mr. BM Bolt for that suggestion. Thank you for throwing that out to the panel. So that was, this is why we do this stuff to get turned on to things and to turn you on to stuff. So, all right, gentlemen, we can, unless anybody has anything else to add, we can wrap this dog up. I want to thank BM Bolt, John the Music Knock, John Clouser, and DC Collins. Go check it out. Go check it out. Wilson Hawk. It's on Bandcamp, it's on uh, YouTube too. So, check it out. Let us know in the comments what you think. So please like, subscribe, check out all these gentlemen's channels. John, John Clouser. John Clouser's putting out stuff regularly now. Yeah, check his channel. Scary. I hit his links down below. So yeah, uh, I finally, I finally located you there, John, and subscribed within the last couple of days. There you Thank go. you, John Clouser. And John Clouser John, building John the, the music empire. Not, do you do you have a station too? He's, I do not. Oh, okay. Because I, I just moonlight on everyone else's channels. So. Good enough. Good. He's enough. everywhere. He's, he's the busiest man on YouTube. He's the busiest. No, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's Grant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm busy for a guy busier. who doesn't have a channel. That's about it. <laughs> it's getting busier, too. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Way busier. But I haven't told anybody yet, but uh, it's way busier. Well, anyway. that's, that's good, man. That's what you want. Yeah, it is. Anyway. Boom, boom, boom. God, I'm going to have to make an edit. I forgot I'm still recording. So anyway, <laughs> thanks, everybody. I'm going to do it from here. All right, John the Music Nut, John Clouser, DC Collins, and then Byron Bolt. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. We will see you on the next one. Please like, subscribe. Well, oh, wait a minute. Is that Judas Priest? Wait, what? Is there a Judas Priest? Something you want to promo? Oh, it's just, just what John and I are doing right now. Go ahead. Tell everybody real quick. All right, that's, that, that's the quick thing. Right now, John and I are doing the Year of the Priest. Uh -huh. We're looking at, we are looking at Judas Priest's catalog. Oh, so that's a good one right there. Well, there you go. Check that out on John's channel. Please like, subscribe, check him out, give him some love. So, all right, everybody, we'll see you. And uh, what's next? God only knows. But just keep, stay tuned. There'll be more. All right, everybody, we'll see you.